Welcome to an almost productive coffee break. The same bold flavor of our original podcast brew in a single shot. Perfect for those times when you need a quick marketing pick-me-up. I'm Sean. I'm Julie. I'm Addie. And I'm Ben. And we are all marketing professionals at New Boston Creative Group in Manhattan, Kansas. Why are there so many insurance commercials? Okay, that was not really the intro. So why are there so many insurance No, 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 you can't do that and then try to breeze past it. Well, I was reading it and I was like, oh, look, here's this little gift that I created. So that was that was Kermit. Right, that was yeah. Kermit. Okay, one hundred percent. Like double checking. Kermit Terry. Um, <laughs> it was Terry doing Kermit. Ter- yes, Terry doing Kermit. <laughs> Julie doing Terry Death doing Kermit. I think. Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> yeah. What I think you should do is you should record a, the song separately, and we'll just put that in. Super. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, why are there so many insurance commercials? Well, it's a highly competitive market. For starters, there's a limited consumer base. The number of new drivers or homeowners pale in comparison to existing ones. On top of that, the products, I mean, they all seem pretty similar, right? So the game is all about wooing customers, which comes down to brand value and recognition. So who comes out on top? We'll discuss right after a word from our sponsor. Today's coffee break is brought to you by banks. Thanks for your money. Just kidding. It's our money now. For today's coffee break, we're having an insurance commercial showdown. There are lots of insurance companies and even more characters. So in the interest of brevity, I've narrowed it down. Geico, which I did not know this, but that stands for Government Employees Insurance Company. Did you all know that? I don't think it does. I think you made that up. I know. Well, I looked it up online, so 100% true. So think the gecko, think the caveman. Progressive has Flo, Dr. Rick, Liberty, there's Limu Emu, State Farm, Jake. Uh, Allstate has uh, Dean Winters, arguably the Morgan Freeman of the commercial world, uh, and Mayhem. So this is your playing field. These insurance companies enter a stadium. Only one comes out. Your task is to pick the winner. So you determine the criteria and the reasoning for your choice. Go. A fight to the death? Like a Hunger Games Who physical fight? Who comes out fight? victorious? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you can pick the what the match is. Right. So if you want to do yeah. Hunger Games style, right. then who wins? Yeah. That's Yeah, that was me brainstorming. That is yeah. my go-to reaction to putting people in a stadium. Mm-hmm. Not football. <laughs> fight to the death. I think that let's start with that one first. Okay. I think it's Limu Emu. No one Whoa, can defeat an Emu. What? Yeah. <laughs> no. You, have you ever... Have, you think an Emu is beating a caveman yeah have you met an emu? and the gecko they can team up and work together no who says no. they're working together Never. is that allowed are we allowing them? have you seen the hunger games people work together sometimes. the judges say it's allowed <laughs> oh yeah. dang it okay well they're on they're on the same team they're team geico i i think the le- like if you've ever met an emu in real life they are mean big birds the bigger they get the meaner they get that guy that's always with the lemu emu dies instantly lemu emu <laughs> doesn't even shed a tear just like keeps going uh, but crafty, aggressive, limu emu, limu emu all the way. Yeah, I mean, I think that's an interesting choice. Um, <laughs> but I think the caveman takes it. And honestly, if I'm if I'm really getting into the details, he does notice that the emu has a lot of skills and rides the emu around. And so you have a caveman on top of an emu. Oh. Which is basically an unstoppable force. That's a tag team. Right. Yeah. I, I can get down with that. You know, he befriends the emu, domesticates the emu, just like we have with all animals. Uh, you know, the caveman starting primitive. But he uses that to his advantage and, yeah, just dispatches everyone. And then, you know, obviously at the end has to either dispatch the emu as well, and which will be tragic. Um, or if or if allowed, you know, we can be like yeah, both try to eat poison berries at the same time so the game makers end the Hunger Games or whatever get the game we call this. 
the insurance bowl. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, very similar to Sean. I'm going with the cave. Well, I'm going team Geico. I think that the gecko and the caveman have very opposite skill sets. The gecko can just go hide. No one's finding that gecko. It's just hiding until all of the bloodshed has finished. And then the caveman, they're crafty. They have a lot of skills, fire, wheels, all of that good stuff. And I think that they just have a higher pain tolerance than we do today. So very easily taking out the other human competitors. Okay. I... I see. I was really confused because to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, caveman's just a, he's a dude. He's a dude from a long time ago. He's just a guy. And a lot of the traits that you noted, like wheels and fire, are things that people can do. It's not caveman specific. <laughs> I guess no, it is more durable. Mm -hmm. I guess is like better pain tolerance. Like that's yeah. pretty good. You know, oh, you know who doesn't create fire and wheels? Emus. Ooh. Emus, weird. <laughs> they shit. can't do that. So. They don't have opposable thumbs. They don't. That's true. You got me there. Can't can't beat that. Julie, what do you think? Well, if if we're going with the Hunger Games, which you all you all shaped that, um, I actually had a different thought going into this, but I love it. I love where the the direction that this has taken. I would say Mayhem from Ooh. Allstate because he is already in it, messing stuff up. And I feel like he is gonna he's gonna battle through no matter what. That's a good point because in the commercials he does seem like an unstoppable force, mm -hmm. if yeah. anything, because like he is the embodiment of mayhem, and that might be yep. that might be hard to defeat. Uh, you know, you're not defeating a person, but more the the concept. You know, how do you defeat a concept? The essence. I'll tell you what won't defeat a concept: either. an emu. An emu. <laughs> I love the idea because our description of mayhem right now sounds exactly like the caveman. It's just like, oh yeah, he's durable. He has large pain tolerance. So I'm but like, he's got a a really large developed prefrontal cortex is see, what he has. Now yeah. you're now you're playing. <laughs> now I yeah. like where we're going with this. Yes. Yeah, I mean yeah. mayhem is like it's it's shape shifting. He's you know a crash <laughs> car. He's a uh, destroyed basketball hoop. He's a mascot. Like, he oh. can be all of these things. And so it's just, I don't think you're going to get a pin on him. That's the part of the lore that I was missing. I did not realize that these were parts of him. I thought he was finding these items and crashing them and no, ruining them. No, he is. He is, he is. He is mayhem. Yeah. 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 He's a genie of sorts. A mm -hmm. genie of chaos. Okay. I'm team mayhem now. Limu Emu is going to die. <laughs> <laughs> So what's funny about this conversation is if we went the different route and talking about like most effective or most memorable commercials, I would have said State Farm, Jake from State Farm, who did mm. not even really get brought up in this conversation at all. So yeah. let's go down that road. You, you've you called out State Farm. Ben, Sean, how about you guys? Yeah, who, I think, who would um, take the brand trophy? I mean, I think Progressive's doing a really good job um, with developing flow and the whole team um they really stuck with that and and that's really great and then on top of that now with the uh dr rick ones um so they've got a couple of knockout campaigns right now that i think are just doing awesome yeah it is weird that there's been a spin-off kind of collection of flow adjacent people i don't know any of their names i could not tell you i'm sure they're on those big name tags that they're always wearing in the commercials but i do not jamie remember is one jamie yeah. yes and then there's the one that was like there's the commercial where she's like oh i don't want to go get tacos yep. or whatever like she does reverse psychology mm -hmm. she's more of the deadpan character i remember them so i'm like yeah progressives up there i think that geico gecko also just has a lot of longevity he beats the caveman in my head at least in terms of literally i mean they got rid of the caveman campaign for a long time and kept the gecko and now are bringing him back again so yeah i think the gecko is better for the brand awareness yeah i'd argue the caveman is a funnier commercial but if you're trying to be like remember yeah. who this is i think the gecko makes more sense yeah because no one's going to remember the government employees insurance company but they will remember a little gecko right. who talks in on I assume an Australian accent. Yeah, have we ever figured that out? Is it British? I don't. I, think it's I don't think we British. know why. Is it British? 
I don't know. I don't think it's Australian. New Zealand. Oh, no, we I would now know, know if what it's we'll New be Zealand. Googling after this episode. <laughs> So that's our take for a fascinating look at the evolution of the Geico campaign and kind of how the mascots started. We will have a link to a great NPR story in our show notes. If you have a take on who comes out of that stadium victorious, leave it in our comments. Thank you for listening to this episode of Almost Productive. Before we go, we'd like to give a shout out to our producers, Nick and Molly, who work behind the scenes to make this podcast possible. If you'd like to learn more about what we do at New Boston Creative Group, you can reach out to us at newbostoncreative.com. You can also follow us on social media at New Boston Creative on Instagram and New Boston Creative Group on Facebook and LinkedIn. If you liked this episode, please like, follow, subscribe, leave a review and share the podcast with your friends. And if you didn't like the show, feel free to recommend us to your enemies. Tune in next time for some more office shenanigans, thoughts on trending topics, and marketing-adjacent insights. Until next time, we hope you have a productive day. (laughs) 